So I think I'm just sharing my presentation. Is that right? That we see, Andrea? Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll start with just a, a short uh, presentation. I'll try to keep it to 15 minutes, and and then we'll we'll have a panel discussion. And again, our idea, what we wanted to do is um, talk about a career in tech. We're as uh, as part of the Solid City DevOps Days organization and as part of this meetup we really want to promote technology we think it's a great career path and i know i have young kids that are just starting to get into the uh, technology and often wondering how you get started and i get asked that all the time so wanted to kind of present that so so my name is brett palmer i am a software developer devops engineer entrepreneur um, working in tech for the last 25 years and really a promoter of careers here in Utah and open source technology. I currently uh, am an independent contractor for the state of Utah, helping them migrate uh, to the cloud and moving to open source solutions. And I'm, as I mentioned, I'm also one of the organizers for Salt Lake City DevOps Days and DevOps Utah Meetup. So as, as just an overview uh, from current in 2021, IT uh, salaries are double what other occupations are here in the US. So IT medium annual salary is $91,000 a year and average salary for other occupations is about $42,000 a year. And that's from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2021. Some of the high paying tech jobs. And again, these I think are, you know, these are medium pay, really depends on your experience, but on, on a, a, a medium salary for tech management, $174,000. I won't go over all these, but some of the ones, management, cloud computing is really hot here in Utah, 140,000. DevOps is something that we talk about a lot in our monthly meetups, 121,000. Uh, cybersecurity, uh, programming, data analytics are all exciting fields that, and their salaries continue to go up. So it's, an, it's from a financial reward uh, perspective, tech jobs are fantastic. So I want to talk about one of the questions I get a lot are education and training. Um, the training options, uh, there's the traditional college and university, which probably most people are familiar with. It's the go to computer science, go to engineering. Uh, there are new fields like data science that are available now. Um, there's also programming boot camps, and we have several good ones here in the state of Utah. Uh, there's also online classes and on on job training. We'll talk a little bit more about each of those as we go. So college, this is a a, a one that I you know, I went to college and went to and got a master's degree. That's what I, my parents told me to do. I've encouraged my my kids to do. But uh, and one of the some of the pros are often it's a requirement. So sometimes on a lot of interviews I do, we require them to have a college degree, um, and then we you get some good problem solving skills. And if you want to do you know if you want executive positions in a in a in a large company, board positions often require a college degree or even a master's degree. Cons are uh, the education costs are continuing to climb. That is, uh, you hear about it all the time about co uh, cost of, of, of tuition. And my biggest criticism of a college degree is it doesn't really give you the current skills that we need today. Uh, I know when I tutor some of my kids in some of the, their computer science programs, I'm always wondering, I mean, they're still teaching you to do bubble swords and stuff like that when you'll never do one again. But, um, and they don't teach you cloud computing. Often you don't learn artificial intelligence and some of those new technologies that are out there today. So here's just a graph. Again, this is uh, 2017, but just showing the cost of tuition. When I went to school, it's gone, you know, in the, in the late eighties and nineties, it's, it's four times what it was back then. And I can't say it's a lot better than it was back then. So that's the sad reality of, of higher education today. Okay. Oh, I skipped a few here. Let's see. Oh, 
Okay. Boot camps. So boot camps are something new. Um, they are a good way to learn current on demand uh, web development. You complete them in a few weeks uh, or months, so much shorter. Um, the cons are they can be kind of expensive, but cheaper than college because you're not you're not there as long. Um, the other thing is they're usually only focused on programming. So uh, I know in the DevOps group we talk about they don't teach you DevOps, they don't teach you cloud computing that much, um, and and getting a job sometimes is a bit of an unknown. Depends on on the program. Some have really good programs where they are affiliated with a local company and will get you in type of an internship program. Those are, those are perfect. Okay, online learning. This is another one that's, there's a lot of good online, online learning programs. The pros again are flexible time and courses uh, and the cost is often low. Uh, the difficulty is sometimes it's difficult to learn real world application problem solving. And uh, you often lack that student teacher collaboration, um, but we've just gone through COVID. So a lot more people are used to online learning. So it's, it's probably improving. Some of the resources, I, I have a lot of courses in Udemy, Pluralsight, um, Code Academy I know is a good resource. And Cloud Academy, if you want to learn cloud computing, it's a good good place to learn uh, DevOps and Azure and AWS and Google. On the job training, uh, this is one of the uh, great programs. If you're in college now, I always encourage people to get into internships. It's a great way to learn. I know when I was in college, I had a couple of uh, three internships. They were they were really good. I found out what I didn't want to do. And it also helped me get my first job. Um, so the pros are you get paid while you're learning, you get real world, world experience. Uh, the, the cons are they're sometimes difficult to find without experience. So like internships are often only available to those that are in a, a technical training program or in college. It's hard to get one without that. Uh, and it may not provide the training you want. So it might be proprietary learning, uh, a lot of government jobs will train people because they need uh, technical resources, but maybe they're training you something you're, you're not really, you don't want to do. Maybe they're training you to maintain a mainframe and mainframes are a little out of, out of, of season right now. So um, those are some of the cons. Here are some, some ways of getting a job though. And as I talk with people, students getting that job, how do you get that first job? So the most important requirement that, that I find when I read resumes is experience. So experience, experience, I put an Eagle Scout there, but I'm just joking because I had to put that in there because my mom always told me if I was an Eagle Scout, I'd, I'd get a job, which didn't work out. But I'm, I'm an Eagle Scout, so that, that's good. Great for my mom and me. Uh, but experience is still the number one uh, uh, job. Uh, attribute you want to put on your resume. So how do you get experience? Uh, I'm a big, obviously we run this meetup. We, I think I go to a lot of meetups here in the state of Utah. It's a wonderful program where you meet lots of different people in professions and in technologies that you're, that, that you're using or that you want to learn about. So you learn about problems to solve. Other ways to learn it and often at these local meetups is you find out about open source projects. So Open source projects are a fantastic way to learn from experienced uh, technicians in their particular field and how you use that for problems uh, to solve today. And, and, and we'll talk about resumes in a minute, but that's, that's how you can then put on your resume what open source projects you, you worked on. And that's, those are things that uh, you know, people that are hiring like myself like to read about. Um, other things, uh, technical articles. I like reading articles from Medium. They, uh, a lot of technicians will put down uh, problems that they're having maybe at their company and how they solve them. And those are great ways of, to learn. You, often they give the sample code or sample solutions. Um, you could follow along with those 
And what I'd recommend is you, you follow along with those and then come up with an, a unique solution you need to solve. Don't just pirate or copy exactly what they have, but come up with something, a, a variance of that, and then implement it. Uh, and then share your implementations and designs on GitHub are a fantastic way to get your work out there and let people see what you can do. And you can put it on your resume. So landing the job, uh, networking always helps. And attending these local meetups is a great way to network with others because you're gonna meet other people, other companies, uh, other, re other technicians or people also looking or maybe senior level people that are teaching something and you can find out uh, if they have any job openings, attend conferences. So I give the example, I have my uh, second oldest daughter was studying computer science a few years ago. And I invited her to our Salt Lake City DevOps days. And again, another, you know, push for our, our DevOps conference. But uh, she went to it, you know, because she's in computer science, went to one of the vendors there from, and was just talking with them and was asking about interns, internships. And they gave her an internship. And a couple of years later, when she graduated, she had been working as an intern and they hired her and she got her first job. And she's currently working in that field today. So that, there's a good example of just being there at the right time and making yourself available. And that's where I think, you know, networking is, is very helpful. And I know if you're like me, a lot of people that are in tech don't like networking. It's difficult for them, but it is a really a big help if you can do that. And, uh, and you'll meet a, a lot of people working in, in the same areas you want to work up. So you'll learn tons from them. The other is writing effective resumes. There's lots of online resources on how to do this. I read lots of resumes and a few tips um, from my perspective, as I've talked with others, uh, you know, in our organization. Number one, I, I know I know we mentioned education, but that's always something, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a checkbox. It's really not that important. What we really wanna know is what experience you did. So putting your most relevant work experience on your resume, and instead of just a bullet line, a short paragraph describing the, your work experience, what problem you solved and how you did it, and then tailor your resume for each position you're applying for is a great way to go. Uh, advancing your career. So advancing your career in tech, uh, one, one challenge is you always need to be continually training and learning. Tech changes frequently. I've been in this in the tech area for 25 years and it has changed a lot. There's a lot of fundamentals of the same, uh, but it has changed. And if, if you're not constantly learning or if you don't wanna learn or, or if you don't like change, then you know, careers in tech may be a little more challenging. But uh, the other thing is learn your, learn the soft skills. This is one that I think technical people often struggle with, uh, but it's, they're great rules to go by. One is get along with people. Uh, always learn to get along with people, um, treat everyone with respect, be humble. And at the end of the day, remember, as a, as, a, as a person in technology, you're really a problem solver. So you're solving problems and whatever you, you can do to help uh, an organization or a business solve a technical problem, you will advance in your career. You're going to be irreplaceable. So pros to careers in tech. As, we, as I mentioned, it's very financially rewarding. Um, it's always changing and advancing, which I think it's a pro um, because it's uh, never boring and there's always new challenges. Uh, it would be a con if you, if you don't like change and like to keep it the same. Um, but I, I think that's one of the exciting parts of tech that's always changing. I, I think it's improving. It's, you know, the online learning, um, the ways of learning, uh, the technology that's more available now. When I started, you know, there are a few languages you would learn, a few technologies, but now there's so many more fields out there. It's really exciting. So I find that really positive. Some of the cons, there are cons. It can be stressful. I think anyone here that's, that's working knows that there are stressful times. Um, there's pressure to make timelines. There's pressure when systems go down and the tech industry can be cyclical uh, i've been in startups before and 
we we're in current, currently a, a downturn right now with the economy as it is and inflation where it's at. Uh, there are layoffs, and there are closures. Um, one thing I, I forgot to mention though, you know, we've just gone through uh, you know a pandemic and we're still going through this pandemic. Uh, the one thing that I found at least with people in 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 my in in, in my occupation is we were probably less affected by that. In fact, many of us for myself and, and even to this present day work 100% from home, which in my career, I've never been able to do that completely. Um, but COVID kind of pushed that button and management realized that, hey, you know what? We're just as effective working from home as we are at the office. So I save, you know, 40 minutes to an hour every day in a commute. So that's, that's one positive that, um, came on by the by the pandemic. And then just one conclusion, uh, we need more diversity in tech. Uh, and I really try to promote this. Like a few months ago, I, my youngest daughter wants to be a pilot and we were watching uh, the unsung heroes of, of NASA and Apollo 11 and the mission control, it's, it's on Netflix. Great, great documentary. Uh, the engineers at, at NASA did amazing things as being the 60s. But the one thing that my, my daughter said, boy, that would have been cool to be an engineer back then. And I, and I said to her, yeah, <clears throat> that would have, except if you look at the picture here, you'll notice that every one of these were white males. There are no women, no people, uh, no people of color, not a very diverse uh, career. And I'm not... And I, that's something that we need to improve. And even today, I know when I went to school, it's still still uh, a lot of uh, mostly male dominated. We, we need to promote that more and get more diversity in, in this career. So that is my presentation. And I want, I want to really turn the rest of the time over to our panel uh, and open it up for discussion. Um, so, uh, we have quite a few attendees and Ari, Nikki, a volunteer to be on the panel, Andrea, hope you, you're also on the panel. And again, if there's any, anyone here that's a, a manager or has, uh, some feedback to, to add, add to the community, um, please, please go ahead. But. Are there are questions from the group or things you want to ask about careers in tech or training? I don't really have a question. I kind of just have something to add if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, so I'm my technology background is kind of different. So I actually I I went to school for business, but I recently started a new job at a company called Collabra. Um, it's an IT like solutions company. So we specialize in like platform data and cloud engineering. So you know the whole IT space is completely new to me. But obviously, like I'm dealing with different clients who have all these roles open. I see the salaries, I see the hourly rates for these roles, and it's again, yeah, me having a business background, I was like, business is how you make the most money. Clearly not. Like <laughs> Engineering is definitely crazy. So from a monetary perspective, it's definitely, um, definitely really worth it. But I think it's interesting how even if I'm on the sales side, I obviously I have my own benefits of being in IT that way. But I think it's good to kind of know that you don't really need to have the IT full background to get into IT. Like you don't need to be in development to get into IT is what I'm trying to get at. But there's different ways to be in IT. I'm just saying IT is pretty fantastic and very diverse in itself. So just something I want to add. <laughs> no, that's that's a great comment. And I, I, I wanted to, if I had more time, I wanted to get into some of the other project management and scrum masters and a lot of the agile, which are, are more the business level that's still very IT focused. And is a, is a, anyone that's IT realizes that operations and having all that work smoothly requires lots of business skills and you can still be involved in IT. And, and I, I think, as you mentioned, I, I, I think there's going to be pressure going forward that CEOs for companies are going to have to have an IT background. Maybe, maybe not an engineering background, but are going to need to be familiar with the, the uh, life cycle of, of software and deploying things um, in, in, 
in the real world. So great comment. Looks like Omar's got a hand raised. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. So this is Omar. Um, I, I worked before with Amazon as IT engineer for five years, and now I'm working with uh, Pacific uh, Office Automation, an MSP company. So uh, during my career, I got to the level to the CCMP with networking. And after I got my CCMP, it was very hard to me to find network engineer job. Uh, especially now because now they asked to the company asking to have like more skills in python coding which is for sure it's out of cisco scope when you go to certification so so that's why i'm trying now to change my career or not changing the whole career just changing my path to be devops so my question to you is so which certification you see valuable for the DevOps uh, engineer? Uh, I've got some answers on that. Ari, do you have some comments on that? You're in that field. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, it sounds like, and Omar, I wasn't sure if I heard everything you said, but it sounded like you have uh, five years of network engineering experience, specifically Cisco as a, is Cisco as a Cisco engineer, is that correct? Um, it's it is mixed between uh, networking and system engineer because I work with Amazon as IT engineer, which is mixing okay. between networking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 getting and and one of the things, obviously, to, from a DevOps standpoint, having the scripting skills is obviously exceptionally important for automation purposes. So it sounds like you're on the right path. I think that um, from a certification itself standpoint, um, I wouldn't necessarily think that. There's nothing that stands out that um, that says this is the one to get because you know every DevOps environment that you're going to encounter is so different. They're, everyone's working in different cloud environments. Everyone's working in different with different languages in those environments. Uh, I think I think you have something. I, I think you're on target as it relates to Python. Python is multi-purpose. Uh, it's the most widely used in DevOps environments. And it's something that if you have a good command of from a scripting standpoint, you're going to definitely um, definitely be able to use that skill set. Though I would say that I don't think uh, I don't think you would necessarily need a certification for that. I think it's a matter of um, being able to uh, do as much practice with an, with that automation. And if you're looking to change jobs, you have to be able to share that information. Uh, very, very clearly on your resume that shows that you've been able to take on that skill set or show some training that you've gotten. Um, if, but the, the, honestly, the most, uh, and I'll let you respond to this, Brad, but I think one of the most widely, uh, from a certification standpoint, one of the ones that I see in the DevOps space that's the most valuable, and it's for DevOps and cloud, really, it's the AWS certification. It seems to have some clout in the industry. Um, and uh, I was actually reading um, on, on dice.com, uh, recently, uh, it's just one of the more favored certifications out there in general um, that has weight as a certification by itself. So, those are my thoughts on that. Is this for DevOps certification or architecture for AWS? I think it's uh, the AWS is really the cloud. Their cloud certification of their cloud certification is just because of how widely it's used. Um, and they have different they have different levels of certifications too. It's not specific um, that that you can have. It's usually the uh, AWS cloud um, certifications okay. are the are the ones that seem to have the most market value. Now, granted, I've, obviously the experience you bring along with that is going to be important. Mm -hmm. But right now, when there's an in demand situation, if somebody has that AWS certification, but not necessarily all the experience they'd like to have. Um, a lot of companies are more likely to give a good technologist that has good skill sets uh, a chance with a technology they may not have experience with because there's such a lack of resources right now uh, in uh, or lack of uh, talented people. I hate calling people resources, uh, but a lot of a lack of talented people in the space. Yeah. So would, okay. Thank you, Elmer. I I would just add to that that so. I, I like the AWS certifications. I think the Solutions Architect one is a good path. They do have a DevOps certification, which is a good path. If there was, there's one certification that I find pretty useful is Terraform certification, which mm -hmm. is 
a, a real skill to have. And the nice thing with Terraform is it's used across all clouds. And, and so I tell like a lot of my systems, my sysadmins, that that's the skill to learn for your next job. The, 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 the old role of a system administrator is kind of going away and more automation. And by using learning Terraform, um, you, you can gain that skill. But I think you're on the right path. Python is a great language to learn. You, you don't have to be uh, a 100% you know, programmer, but know some of the fundamentals will be great. Michael, so I would just like you. to add to that the fact that um, you really should research the company that you would like to work for and look at their job openings and their skills of what they're looking for, as long as the technologies that they're using, because you want to make sure that you're able to, you know, kind of check all of that off when you apply to that company. And then you can also really talk to what it is, you know, the skills that they're looking for the technologies, and they may give you some indications of what certifications they value. For example, you know, they may say AWS system administrator, blah, or, you know, that sort of thing, or they may be using Azure. So you'd want to look down that or Oracle and IBM. Um, that will also really help to lead you into what they call DevOps, because everyone seems to kind of say, you know, DevOps can be a big umbrella. But each place, each company tends to also, you know, kind of look at a different skill set or call DevOps, you know, one thing and another company calls DevOps another thing. So, you know, I would really, you know, just take a little bit of a step back and research the companies that either have openings or, you know, what you would, where you would like to work. Okay, thank you. Michael, you had a question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the certifications. Um, so I have a certification training company, been around for about 12 years in the Valley here. And um, um, I get asked a lot about entry level, you know, how to get into IT through certifications. And I just wanted to give you guys some some feedback from what I do and what I've learned. Um, there's There's four certifications that will open the doorway for you into IT. Um, a little bit more general than DevOps, but uh, uh, the first one is called the CTFL, Certified Tester Foundation Level. And it's, its full acronym is ISTQB hyphen CTFL. And um, um, that's a three-day program and you learn how to test software. It's an introduction to, to software testing. And um, um, that's a really good certification for getting in the door if you don't have a lot of technical experience, but you wanna get into the industry. Um, uh, a second certification that's really important is a Scrum Master certification. And if you haven't heard of that, um, Scrum is a basic um, model of, of work that team teamwork that um, is everywhere in IT. Uh, most every company everywhere in IT has some kind of Scrum going on. And a Scrum Master is a good foundation certification. It's a two day program. It, it alone is really not enough. Um, it's good to understand what you see going on and what you what you hear people talking about, but you really need something else along with that to uh, to get into IT. Um, a good complement to that is a product owner certification, which is also a two day program. And um, the product owner certification teaches you how to kind of be a, a project manager with the team, especially if you have some other technical background. Um, you can bring to the table or some other business acumen you can bring to the table a product owner and a scrum master certification are a good way to get started with with the team in a maybe a, a smaller company and then the third the fourth one is a a cap m certification that's the entry level project manager certification that's a four-day program and it teaches you um, the fundamentals of project management and um, larger companies uh, we'll look for either the PMP, which is the, the, the full bird, um, you know, project manager certification for people that have experience already, but they're also looking for junior project managers with the CAPM certification, and they will hire you without any experience, um, just, just uh, you know, with that certification showing that you've been trained on the fundamentals, and they'll take you under their wing, and they'll kind of get you up to speed with project management within their company. There's also something else really important to know 
the Department of Workforce Services often will pay for these classes for you. So you can go there and get yourself registered with the program and they have funds available. They will send you to companies like mine and um, get you trained. And uh, so that's, it's a win-win for everybody. So um, it's something to be aware of. Um, and uh, so, so I just wanted to, to um, tell you about that. Thank you. Uh, and one more thing, Brad, I, just to cap off certifications, I have a link here. Um, you know, every year, uh, you mentioned the Department of Labor Statistics, which obviously are important stats. Uh, I, I, I don't know the, one of the reports, I, re I really do like the DICE report. Um, I understand that DICE is considered a job board, but they're much more than that. Uh, they, all they do is technology jobs um, as it relates to their job board. So they really do some amazing surveys and uh, salary trends and so forth. But I'm going to drop a link in the chat for everybody um, so that people can check out uh, the synopsis from, 2020, from the 2022 report based on 2021 about uh, thoughts on the certifications. I think you'll see a lot of what uh, was shared uh, summed up in, in that. So I just dropped that link in the chat. Great. Thank you. So Nikki, do you, do you have recommendations for, you know, uh, this group and careers in technology or careers in general? Thank you. I do, um, not specifically as specific um, as certifications, um, but one of the things that I like to encourage people to do when they are looking for a new career or a new job is to make sure that the culture fits. Make sure that you're going into a company where um, you feel like there is a sense of belonging, where your ideas are important. And I always tell people it's really it's really important that you are when you're interviewing, um, you should also be interviewing the company as they're interviewing you, um, because you want to make sure that you can be authentic and be your authentic self, because that's the way we get our best work product. So I just encourage folks to, um, as you're on your search, as you're on your hunt, um, to make sure that it's not the dollar figure that is pulling you into a space, um, but the complete picture, because uh, culture and environment really kind of um, work themselves into what your full compensation is when you look at the whole picture. So be aware of those things. Yeah, that's great. That's good advice. And, and likewise, I guess if you kind of had a path you wanted to go on, think about that as you're as you're investigating those companies. Would you agree? Like if, oh, if someday I want you want to be a CIO or something else. And if you do, you do follow the media, right? Follow the media of the company and the types of companies that you're looking to work for, um, because you get to learn a lot uh, based on the types of awards the companies are winning or the types of op-ed pieces the C-level executives are writing. So you wanna, again, th that, that circles us right back to that alignment, um, you know, you being aligned with the vision and mission of the companies that you're looking for. But if there's a, a specific career path, you know, there are things, you know, Nike's famous for, for running shoes, right? So if I want running shoes, I'm going to Nike, not Brooks Brothers. So in that same sort of vein, if you are looking for a career in X, look at the companies that are leading out on, on those specific um, those specific titles that you're looking to, to secure. Perfect. Are there like conferences, Nikki, you'd recommend here in the state that would help someone on that path or mostly um, just the media? No, I think that uh, being involved with organizations that are in your field is, is an excellent way to network. Networking is so important. I say always, if you, you need to network to increase your net worth. And, it, you know, you need to be in spaces where the people are who you want to be. Um, so Women Tech Council offers amazing opportunities for um, women to come together and to talk about technical careers and to look at um, mentorship opportunities and, and that sort of thing. I don't um, specifically off the, off the top of my head, I can't think of any very specific um, 
IT conferences, but of course, Silicon Slope Summit. Um, you know, people come from around the world to attend that and it's right in our backyard. And it is really um, full of, of nuggets and wisdom and networking opportunities. So I, I encourage people again, to make sure Silicon Slopes is on your, uh, is on your calendar of events every year. Great, perfect. I haven't been to Silicon Slopes yet, so. Ah. Uh. Put it I'm on your bucket list. It's important. I I, I missed uh, PyCon. It was recently, at the end of the last month here in Salt Lake. Yeah, conferences are coming back. It's it's been it's been a challenge to do conferences, and I know a lot of us miss them, and some 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 are even hesitant to do them. But it is 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 great to get back. A great way to network. And I think the local ones like Silicon Slopes and DevOps Days and local Python ones are, are, are fantastic. Sometimes the bigger ones are almost too hard yeah, to, to, to really meet people. Yeah, I agree. Uh, other questions anyone has on, they can ask the panel or, or even if you have feedback, if you're a hiring manager and, and you, and some of the things you're looking for in resumes or job positions? Well, I've, um, I've, I've been in, I've interviewed lots of people and um, certifications, at least in the positions that I've interviewed for are, they would give me a good idea of what I could and could not ask of the candidate, but I always found that um, what I really cared about was could you do the job? So I'm not a fan of tricky questions and uh, crazy, what color is the bear type questions. I just want to know the level of his technical expertise. And it's, so I, I, I myself, at least, I tend to go as deep as I can first and see where I can't get a good answer from the candidate. And, Okay, so that's that's as deep as he goes. So let's work up and see, well, how shallow it is. So that, that's at least how I tend to interview people. But yeah, I agree with everyone said it's been really challenging finding candidates because there isn't everyone, anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know when I look at resumes, well, oftentimes I don't know, you know, Unless you were, went to school in the United States, I don't really know what school you went to, so it doesn't. It's really irrelevant. But what really matters on the resume is is not necessarily the laundry list of all the things you you know the skill sets because you anyone can put those in. It's actually talking about what you did and describing it, and then in the interview process, being able to articulate that in a pretty that we know that's what you really did. It's not something you just looked up, but you actually did it. And I think being honest, you know, like when you ask a question, just saying, hey, I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a quick learner, but this is how I solve this other problem can really help you in some of those. But I'm, I'm also, I don't like doing quizzes or here, solve this, you know, how fast, how small can you make this function in C? You know, a lot of those things are kind of, tricky tech questions, but not really relevant to, to what we're trying to do. So I've heard from a number of dev managers that they really like to see projects where they have access to GitHub. So they can really learn how a candidate thinks and how they would write code and how they approach problems. And that's been very useful. So if, you know, some of these you know, hackathons, different projects that you can get on where your output is actual code that someone can have access to to review has been very impactful with candidates. And I've also seen candidates kind of skirt around a little bit that degree by coming in, you know, they're starting their degree, they get an internship, and then they get hired by the company and they never end up finishing that degree. And then they get hired from another company because of their experience. So there are some ways to kind of skirt around, 
you know, getting that piece of paper as well. And I've seen actually, I know three circumstances um, recently, you know, within the past three years that have worked out for those candidates that way. So, you know, even if you kind of start down a path just to get your foot in the door, then you might end up being able to shift from there. Because I've made a career in technology, but I don't have a technology degree. I got in, started out with testing. Um, the company I worked for actually was doing testing software or had an accounting package. And I, I was there working in their management in their accounting department. So I started running both their new code and the existing code and then ended up moving right into their QA department because of the feedback that I gave them. And from that QA department got poached to another company's QA department and then into product management and into some marketing and now back into DevOps and testing. And, you know, so you really can kind of hop around and you don't, you know, you may or may not need as much technical skill. And I was actually a kernel level tester um, at one of my points, along with being able to kind of outperform some of my fellow more technical people, because I'd actually, instead of just reading the lines of code, I'd see if it executed. And so <laughs> sometimes that's very beneficial or trying something as a user. So, you know, never sell yourself short, just, you know, try and, you know, do what you can to learn what you can, you know, even in, on the job if you have to. Also, you know, to, to that point, I'd like to point out um, to folks on the call who may be still kind of deciding what it is that they want to do. Tech companies and, and working in tech requires all skills. So I don't have a technical bone in my body. Uh, but in order to run a tech company, you need to run culture, right? And you need people uh, who understand people. You need people to write copy. You need people to do crisis management. You need folks to do marketing. Um, so the tech industry is really open for all and really here for everybody, whether um, you actually have a technical background or not, because these companies still have to run. Yeah, very true. One thing uh, that uh, Andrea brought up, and you talked about it a little bit there, but uh, I think it really does come down. I was thinking about, I think it was your question, Omar, earlier uh, about uh, uh, the certifications and that you're learning Python. If you don't have actual Python on the job experience, having a GitHub portfolio, uh, uh, having your GitHub uh, available with con code contributions that you're making as you're learning your Python skills. Um, it is going to be it's going to be really, really important because that really is your portfolio. It used to be that only the graphic designers needed a portfolio. And then it, now for then front end developers and designers need portfolios. And really now it's all developers uh, and, and, and a lot of tech people. Any way that you can show your actual work, your coding style um, in your approach, uh, where somebody can take a quick glance at what you've done to determine whether they believe you have the foundation that's going to be successful in that environment is really, really, uh, is, is, is really, really important. So it's almost, it, I would almost say it's kind of like a must have, um, especially if you um, are building up a skill set um, and you want people to see how committed you are um, to really learning and making those things happen. Usually a, a good GitHub portfolio, just like a LinkedIn portfolio um, is really important to have. Yeah. That's great. Andrea mentioned a, a good one, just coming in through testing. First of all, I think testing is a fantastic approach into development anyway. And in some ways, you know, if I had my own company, I'd probably funnel everyone through testing so they had a good testing background in the first place. Because uh, then when you get in development and implementation, you you have that mindset. And uh, and, and as you mentioned, our, um, if, if if there was an open source product, like there's a lot of open source tools or applications going in, learning how to install it and work with it, and then finding bugs and submitting bugs is one way to get, you know, be a contributor to that, to that project. And then even, even you get to a point of knowing how to fix it or even how to, how to reproduce the problem. Cause that's often a common uh, challenge that, 
you know, developers, well, they said there's this de defect, but all you say is it doesn't work. But if you can say, hey, step one through 10, we'll reproduce this problem. Um, Stack Overflow is another one that where you can definitely get a lot of answers, but as you post answers, you get, you get kind of street cred and credibility there that often people hire you just from being that expert in that, in that one area. So, but I, I just want to second again, going through just from a technical perspective is not the only path. And I know I often talk that way, but some of the best technical resources have come from other paths. And so having a different uh, framework on how to approach problems is, is, is a great way to go. And at the end of the day, as I've said in my presentation, you're really a problem solver. So often not, you don't necessarily have to have the technical background if you're a good problem solver. And I think that's- What are you guys doing? Team. Yeah, Jeff, so are there other questions? Yeah, other I think- uh, Jorge has a question that he posted in the chat. He's basically, I think he's trying to ask, where would you suggest looking for companies with positions that allow learning on the job? Yeah, so that's a that's a harder one. That's what I mentioned in um, uh, my presentation. I mean, it's ideal. Uh, Sometimes it depends on the company. So large companies often will train people um, and, and uh, like the government of the state of Utah, Department of Workforce Services, if you work for them, you'll, you'll be an employee and then they'll have pathways to maybe do on, on the job training to learn because uh, they like to promote within. Um, what I talk specifically is about internships, which is kind of unique to college students or people in a boot camp, that's where, uh, like my daughter who got her internship, but she didn't really have the skills for that job, but because she was in school and she was at this conference, she obviously impressed the, the, the vendor there enough to, to give her a chance to work as an intern. An internship is one of those where you, you don't get benefits, you're kind of a contractor, you're making a, a much lower wage, but the but the trade-off is you're gaining some really world, ex, real world experience with a, a with a company, and they're training you, and it's their way of kind of seeing if you're if you would be a good fit for their company. So a lot of companies like to do that. The challenge there is you usually have to have a minimal skill set to get the job in the first place, or have an education background that they're they're willing to invest in that. So sometimes we do have, uh, uh, you know, people that come to our meetups looking for interns, um, but they're, they're, not, they're not always that easy to find. Uh, and Hori asks, uh, companies that offer vacancies to learn. Yeah, I don't, I don't know any offhand. I'm just saying there are, have been some. I know on, on the first job I, I worked at, they had a paid education system. Uh, plan so that again like Nikki was saying is is that if you research the company and you want some more training that would be a good one is look for companies that offer education training so maybe maybe you don't have the, the training for the job you want but um, the company offers to pay for education and and so you come in maybe at a at, at the ground ground level um, uh, but you work your way up and then you you participate in the company's education program, and maybe that's how you get the training that you need for the job that you really want. So that kind of comes in that research part. You know, we, we work a lot, most of our lives. Uh, so I tell my kids that same thing, you're gonna work for a long time. So one thing you've got to really learn is if, if you don't like what you're working at, you know, life is too short to spend working at a company you're not happy with or in a career you're not happy with. So we do a lot of that and it can be really distressing when you're not happy with where you're at. And I, that's why I like the technology field because there's so many different opportunities. It does have its challenges. Um, 
and maybe that's unique to me and i know i'm i'm kind of biased because i i I've, I've really enjoyed it but i have worked at places that i haven't liked and that's the one thing you know that's probably different from my parents my parents stayed at their my my dad was a college professor and was there his whole career uh i changed jobs multiple times and that's kind of that's kind of how how technology works is you probably not going to be at a company for 20 30 years you'll be there maybe five or so years and, and switch so that does make one of the challenges there do we have any other questions been a great group appreciate everyone the questions and the panel Here, here's this kind of a kind of a personal question uh, that I know because I have kids and I have three daughters and I know I've really tried to emphasize going into technology without being too forceful, but often I get a lot of pushback that there is a stigma around technology that uh, it's not cool. You're kind of nerdy kind of person. It's not for athletes. It's not. Uh, you know, how do we overcome some of those kind of stereotypes? To in that's a that's a very good question, and I face some of that very same feedback with family members. And even my, my, I have only one son, and he's more of the creative type, which is fine. But um, yeah, um, I, I don't know the answer. Um, maybe if we could have, um, people have an idea that we're just stuck in front of a computer all day. And if I, if, while it's true that I'm in front of a computer, um, as you, as you, as you move along in your career, unfortunately, you spend a lot of time not really doing computer related stuff, but doing things around what you're supposed to be doing with a computer. So you're still using a computer, but just as a tool, just like any office job, we use a computer, but you're not really doing the nerdy stuff. You're going to a meeting where you're talking or you're whiteboarding and you're discussing. And so those are tools that you're using, but you're not really doing, doing the, you know, the nerdy stuff as people see it. Um, so maybe, I guess what I, what I could say on that point is that if we could do a better job of showing the challenges that people that that we we have to solve every day in technology, maybe with people see, but it's it's really hard. It's how do I how do I tell somebody who doesn't know? How do I explain to somebody who doesn't who's not into the field? It's like, oh, I solved this problem where I have where I have multiple databases who are resilient and fault tolerant in multi-regions across the globe in different data centers and different clouds. And that's really cool. And it heals automatically. It, it doesn't register to them as something cool, but those are they're really hard problems to solve. They had to be solved for that, for that to happen. And I don't know, if you look at a bridge, that's really pretty, you're like, oh, this is pretty, it's cool. Cause it, you know, it's a bridge and it looks, it looks nice. But the math and all the engineering that had to happen to make that bridge happen wasn't, you know, wasn't really sexy as they say. So, yeah, I, I think you did bring a good point though with creativity though, because I there are a lot of people with really good creative skills that maybe they hate math, so they think I can't do this. But yeah, it's not true. <laughs> but but <laughs> creativity totally is is a key part of of a lot of the solutions we're trying to provide, right? So if you're a musician or an artist, those are great skills to have. And there are fields in technology that you would really be at a, a big advantage because there, maybe they're, they're lacking in some of those, some of that talent. Yeah, testing, testing by itself. Like I, I worked for, in testing for, I don't know, three, four years. And uh, it's an unfortunate thing that I think a lot of companies at least in my experience, it's been that way. They don't really value their testers or their, their QA 
staff staff very much. They're you know, like, oh yeah, go do QA. Um, and I say it's unfortunate because QA is really a discipline, and it takes a special kind of. It, it takes skills to to create and run and execute good tests. And there, it's a different set of skills than just, oh, I'm gonna develop this, I'm gonna write this code to do this. It's a different set of skills to exercise all those different points. But a lot of companies tend to um, not spend that much money and effort in their QA. And then they get a lot of bugs. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. I We've got a couple questions. I know we're kind of coming up on the on the seven o'clock time frame. So, Ryan, what what's your question? More a statement. Uh, one thing I've kind of found as a kid, I remember thinking the kind of same thing. Kind of what Roberto said. It's like when you ask them, oh, you know, that's just going to be nerds that are in that field. But the more I work with a lot of people in QA and devs, I've met people that are all into either archery, bodybuilding, um, marathons. And so, you know, just to point out, it's, hey, these people are doing these things. You just don't hear about them. And it's more likely because we're not asking people, well, what hobbies do you have? What are you doing other than just this for work? So that's been eye-opening for me, just seeing like how you know there's more to people than just this job right like they're doing a lot so yeah great michael do you have a question comment yeah i just want to make uh, two comments real quick um uh you uh brett you mentioned earlier about diversity in uh, it and i have two younger sisters that are both project managers in it and they both work from home. They they make a lot of money. They love their jobs. They one's a mom and has two kids. Another one, um, you know, travels around the world um, working remotely. Um, and I mean, they really have the life. And uh, it's it's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful field for for you know anybody. The other comment I wanted to make is um, I, I want to point out a resource to you guys. The Project Management Institute recently published uh, their newest book of the Project Management Body of Knowledge Guide 7.0. It's, it's a thin book, 7.0. And um, what's remarkable about this book is it's not really information about managing projects. It's information about soft skills. The whole book is put together um, to, to, to teach you about like stewardship, teamwork, um, understanding value, you know, leadership, um, quality principles, um, understanding risk, understanding adaptability and resilience and change management. And, um, you know, Brett, you're talking about soft skills are really important also in your career. And yeah, I tell people 30% of your career is, is how well you get along with people. And um, I just wanna recommend that book. Um, you guys should all go buy it. It's uh, the, the PIMBOK Project Management Body of Knowledge 7.0. If you buy it on Amazon, it's expensive. It's around $100, but I think you can buy them on eBay secondhand for like 30 or something. Um, but I, I can't recommend that book enough. It's just a wonderful book um, for really any professional. That's all. Hey, hey thanks, Paul. Can you put it in the chat, the title? Yeah, I do. I'll put a link in it right now. Great. Hey, well, this has been great. Uh, having this panel here, appreciate the discussion. Um, as I mentioned, I put a plug up for plug in for the our, our DevOps conference coming up in a year. And my goal uh, as one of the organizers is to have a meetup every month. It's going to be the second Wednesday of the month. Uh, I've got those all planned out, and so kind of heading up to that conference. I appreciate everyone here. Um, we'll probably start doing in person ones, or maybe rotate because I think. I, I think the virtual ones are still convenient, but it's it's nice to get together sometime, have some pizza that we used to do. Um, any any last minute comments from the panel? And and then Ari, I know you had you had something you wanted to tell the tell the group. So maybe Nikki or Andrea have anything? No final thoughts. Just thank you for for your time tonight. It was a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Andrea. All right, you, you want to 
you're going to offer a, a free car or something like that or something? Uh, not, not quite a car, but uh, actually oh, just okay. uh, you were talking about conferences. And uh, um, for those who I may not have said it clearly before, but I do work for JFrog, which usually doesn't require too much of an introduction at DevOps uh, meetups. But uh, JFrog is the maker of Artifactory, uh, which is the world leading binary repository. I've been around for a very, very long time, um, but JFrog now is an entire end-to-end uh, -end DevOps solution as well. But the reason I share that is we are, um, every year we have our, um, our Swamp Up uh, user conference that comes up. And um, I think, Brett, you're, you said you're going to be attending, right, this year? Yeah, um, I'm going. And it's going, to be in San Diego. it's going to be San Diego, May 25th and 26th. Um, and uh, Brett sent out a uh, email to the group uh, earlier last week, but if you need a copy, where um, for the meetup community, we're offering a 40% discount for the conference. Um, so it's a conference pass. There's going to be a lot of experts from the big corporations. I will have speakers from Netflix and AWS and Microsoft and um, really a lot of key players. And it's going to be in person. It's going to be at a great place. So if anyone's interested in that, definitely feel free to uh, uh, reach out to me or reach out to Brett. Um, we can get that discount code to you, um, but it should be really, really exciting and I'll have a chance to meet you face to face. Um, the other thing that I have to offer uh, is, you know, my role, at, my, my, my title at JFrog is kind of cool. I am the meetup event manager for JFrog. Um, so I actually do meetups for a living. So yes, I've sat in quite a few uh, hundred uh, meetups or virtual meetups over the pandemic. So in order to bring a little bit of uh, meetup cheer, uh, one of the things I like to do is bring a raffle with me. So I was going to share a little screen um, and uh, make an offer. Let's see if I have the ability to share my screen. Do I? Uh, no, I think you disabled, you disabled me, Brett, but I understand why. No, no, I'll, I'll make you a co-host. We, we trust you now. We, cool. We awesome. have to, we gotta, we had to vet everyone first, but so don't, <laughs> don't, don't help with some credit, but yeah, you should there be able you to share So um, basically, uh, so, you know, one of the things I've been doing, especially since the pandemic, was I like to bring a little bit of cheer to the meetups. Now, because it's the internet and we have a compliance department, I can't do live drawings on the internet, but we do randomly select a winner within three business days. If anyone would like to enter, we're giving away an Amazon Echo Show, not the small one that's five inches, but the one that all my kids fight over. It's the Echo Show 8, which is... Uh, um, apparently a more attractive than a television to my children. And I have, and by the way, I have seven children fighting over this uh, uh, because that's how many children I have. So uh, the Amazon Echo Show 8 is really, really cool, good technology. And um, if you are interested, um, feel free to go ahead and um, go ahead and scan the QR code or use the easy bit.ly link that you see below. Uh, what I'll do is within three business days, um, a, win a window is going to be randomly selected. I'll re I will reach out via email to you once the prize is formally accepted by you, uh, we'll share the winner, of course, with your meetup community. This is only for uh, DevOps Utah, by the way. This is not for anybody else. So um, that is, I'll drop the link in uh, the chat in just a moment too. But anyway, if anyone has any questions about that or Swamp Up, please don't hesitate to ask. And uh, it's been great hanging with everyone tonight. I'm definitely looking forward to hopefully getting out and meeting everyone in person. And Brett, I'm looking forward to meeting you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, this is recorded. I'll post it up on our YouTube channel for uh, Salt Lake City DevOps Days and in the next few hours. Um, uh, Michael or Roberto, did you have any other comp? Your hands up, but I don't know if that's. I just wanted to say really quick, I work for uh, Crunchy Data. So we're a Postgres shop. So if you're, a, if you're a database person or if you're a Postgres person, we're always looking for good database people. So, oh, great. So Great. Uh, and one other plug is I, I, we do like local presentations. So I, I, if any of you are interested in doing like a, a presentation on a, you know, we try not to make it like a sales pitch, but always trying to do kind of a solutions based. If you've got, uh, you know, uh, technology you like to show or problems you're trying to solve uh, we try to focus around devops but we can it can be operations and project management as well just uh, contact one of the organizers or through the meetup group and let me know and we'll get you scheduled in that'd be great
All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll Thank see you. you soon. Thanks, everybody. Have Bye. a good night. Bye.